Propaganda is a form of control, not through brute force or physical force, but through control of the public mind. One of my favorites to talk about is the movie The Matrix. It's about a future human society that is controlled by the artificial intelligence that it itself created, but is now controlling the human race, and it's referred to as The Matrix. And the, the protagonist in the film, Neo, is considered the one. The guy who can actually defeat the Matrix and liberate the human race. And so, at one point in the film, he's given an ultimatum by Morpheus, who tells him, you could be the solution um, to all our problems, but you have a choice to make. You either take the red pill or the blue pill. Now, the red pill represents truth, and the blue pill represents fiction. And so Neo doesn't really know what, what is in store for him, but he wants to, he wants to know. He has a, a strong desire to know the truth. And so he takes the red pill. Unfortunately, most of us and most of society takes the blue pill when it comes to our food choices. Taking the blue pill serves two very important functions. The first is taking the blue pill tells us what we want to hear and shows us what we want to see. In other words, we want to know that animals are well taken care for, taken care for and respected during the short time that they're allowed to stay alive before they become food products. We desperately want to believe that they don't suffer or suffer minimally. The second important function that taking the blue pill has is that it advances the agenda of the animal exploitation industries by presenting animals as willing participants in whatever it is that we would like to do with them. Another really important source for me in exploring this topic was a remarkable thinker named Antonio Gramsci, who grew up under the reign of Mussolini in Italy. And in fact, he was the leading anti-fascist intellectual at the time and was imprisoned by Mussolini. And in his prison cell, he wrote what has become known as the prison notebooks his most important work. The influence of this work is felt today in social movements across the world. Gramsci introduced one very important idea, and that is what he called cultural hegemony, which he defines as the domination and manipulation of a society's norms, habits, customs, values, and beliefs through propaganda. And propaganda that promotes the dominant class's worldview as the normal as the normal that everyone else should aspire to. He also showed how propaganda becomes an essential controlling mechanism for fascism and other totalitarian regimes. Now an interesting thing was developing in the United States at the same time. A man named Edward L. Bernays published a book called Propaganda in 1928, in which he advocated that the manipulation of the masses was necessary to maintain order and stability in free democratic states like the United States. His work, Propaganda, became known as the kind of manifesto to propaganda. So much so that in Nazi Germany, Goebbels, who was in charge of the Ministry of Propaganda, um, praised this book and gave it a kind of cult status. And this greatly embarrassed Bernays, so he stopped kind of using, he stopped referring to his work as propaganda and instead replaced it with the term public relations. And so that's kind of how marketing was born. Marketing public relations was born out of the source of propaganda. If we look at an example of how cultural hegemony and propaganda worked in Gramsci's time under fascism, one striking example comes to mind, and that is the Nazis' euthanasia or mercy killing program. So in one infamous case, they went to the Thierenstadt concentration camp where children were kept, and they cleaned up the camp, they cleaned up the children, they dressed them well, and they had them singing patriotic German songs. And they invited the international press, because this is the side of Nazism that they wanted the world to see. When in reality, of course, we know that they were killing millions of healthy children and adults. Now there's a striking parallel in the way propaganda is used in animal agriculture today. By looking at the photo on the left, uh, this is what the industry presents to us. Feel good 
images of happy family farmers with their animals that they're holding affectionately. All a very benevolent scene. Telling us beautiful stories about what a wonderful life it is to be a hard-working farmer and how much they love and care for their animals, right? But the reality is, as we know, that animals' lives are drastically and violently cut short on farms in their infancy or adolescent age, as soon as they can be turned into profitable commodities. In both cases, propaganda is used to conceal institutionalized violence and oppression of an inferior group by a group that considers themselves to be superior. To bring this up to contemporary times, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Chris Hedges in his important book Empire of Illusion wrote, we live in imaginary virtual worlds created by corporations that profit from our deception. At this point some of you might be asking, what is propaganda's role? What is it protecting? And I'm going to throw out a few statistics just to impress upon you just how valuable the assets are of the animal agriculture industry and what propaganda is actually protecting. First, consider the U.S. meat industry, which is worth about $155 billion annually. Next, consider Cargill, the largest player in animal agriculture, who, according to Counting Animals, spent $1,792,000,000 billion in 2012 just on promoting animal products to consumers. And lastly, the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, according to its own statistics, in 2013 spent $1,332,000,000 taxpayer dollars, gave it away as corporate welfare to the agriculture sector just to help them market their products. So that's it for this segment. In the next one, I want to talk about some, some of the important fictions and give you uh, concrete examples of those fictions. So I hope you'll join me for the next episode. Thanks for joining me for this one. Take care and see you soon.